Thank you very much. Thank you for introducing. Actually, I have chosen a little bit uh, of a different topic, and the different in a sense, uh, because uh, this is much needed. I'm so enthusiastic about AI, and this is that you can see from my panel speech that I can see there's a potential and we can leverage a lot from that. So my name is Aisha Tamuri, as uh, introdu introduced by my, um, what's your name? Michal. And uh, I would be just talking about multimodal AI. And multimodal multimodalities exist in telcos for quite some time, and uh, we need to just leverage that opportunity. I uh, I'm an imaginative person, so I will be just uh, uh, requesting all of you to be more imaginative in this, rather than just looking at only the technical stuff that I'm going to propose in those next slides. Second, my view of uh, becoming from network uh, centric towards the customer centric will also be covered within those uh, different slides that I'm going to present. So change, yeah, this is the time. Do you think it is the right time for changing, uh, for changing our approaches in the uh, workplace, for changing the technology and stuff? Or AI is just pushed on us, so we need to change. So change is important, and I'm one of those change agents in, in my company. And also, there are several different people who are the change agents in their companies, and uh, this is the right time for the change. Uh, I'm beginning with a few uh, data trends. Okay, so I'll talk about uh, how we did this AI thing come in from the day one. That was when we were just discussing about too much data, uh, real-time data in general. Many things we were discussing about self-service BI function. Initially, the BI was uh, primarily working with telcos in, uh, for the reporting function. It was back in 2012, and then we have hybrid multi-cloud that Scott has uh, just uh, demonstrated, multi-tenancies, multi-cloud, and all these things, and then comes in the generative AI that we need to just work on. So these trends are coming gradually and slowly, so change is, this is a time for change. So uh, coming at the regulations, we discuss about uh, what happened uh, for GDPR in 2016, and then uh, European acts and all these things which were affecting the telcos for quite some time. And we were discussing those regulations for quite some time. It was uh, multi-country, multi-geography. Sometimes uh, European regulations are good for telcos. Sometimes they find it very, very challenging, challenging to just be cope up with this environment. So, but we need to just think about what is the next in that. So maybe the regulation will keep on coming and we need to just adjust to that or we need to just uh, be okay with the digital landscape they have uh, um, designed for us, or we need to think something more. So this is the time for building up more imaginations, what may come next. Uh, coming from the IT background, I cannot just uh, move be behind for this part of uh, data architecture stuff, because whenever we are just trying to implement the journey towards multimodal and generative AI and all these things, we need to just consider those uh, data, data architecture stuff. Uh, open data, open data lakes come in. Before that, there was data warehouse, and then uh, we have the scalable data mesh uh, that consists of uh, four areas. C companies are still considering, coming from the consulting background, companies are still considering whether data mesh could be the right approach in that. And then there is, a, because there is a federated governance in that, there is a, a data as a product, which is a very good approach, domain-driven teams coming in. And then there would be everything coming, uh, working in harmony for the self on the self-service uh, architecture, the infrastructure part. That's again, considerably very, very unique and different. And then we have data fabric concepts. So many companies adopting data mesh and some companies adopting for the data uh, fabric. And there could be more, more, more than that, different approaches within those, these architecture things. Uh, our journey towards uh, multi-model AI, uh, we had pain points uh, that was mostly related to the customers. And these pain points were just, just the journal pain points for multi-channel, um, the apps and all these things coming in, the digital stuff and this, and the product that need to be covered. Uh, we have uh, issues with uh, 
the, so the issues need to be catered for from three areas. One is the process and the governance need to be very much intact within the companies. The second part is the people part. People need to be upskilled to the level that they should be able to adapt to the new areas. In, uh, and then when they are OK, when we, are, we as a company are there to serve the customers, and if we are unable to serve those customers and we have insufficient the uh, data deliveries within the organization, definitely this is a place we need to change and we need to rethink. Uh, we, this is uh, one uh, part that uh, one of the colleagues has already mentioned about closed loop automation. That he said that in, on the, when we are doing so much closed loop automation for quite some time, they may cause some uh, disruption in the infrastructure part and we have end up having the compute power and computational power issues in that. LLM, to a certain extent, can cover that. So LLM, I try to apply this uh, LLMs, which is a part of the generative AI stuff, on the autonomous network that the telecom operators has been using for quite some time. And we are already, we are not calling it a machine learning or any capability. We were already working on the vision of autonomous network and all telcos are. So it is not something very new to us. What we did is uh, we tried to uh, adopt to the multi-model approach on the autonomous wireless network that was there in, the, in existence and with all telecom operator. We tried to just have this uh, uh, encoding and decoding function. Instead of having encoding, decoding both, we need to have a encoding function and then work on image text and all these multimodality that exist within the telcos. Then we have self-retention networks. Uh, that's also for the LLM, that this telco LLM could be able to uh, work on image, text, code, video, and all these things. But this seems to be a too much technical stuff for all of you, and uh, I can see the faces of not absorbing so much information on telecom LLMs. Uh, there is a paper in the end that is a reference paper you must read, but I have another slide for you. The next slide, that can explain these modalities in more details. What is a unimodal and what is a multimodal? That, can be, that has been given in quite clear detail in this. So we need to have, describe this uh, picture, what is the form of data, that's a text. Then provide a picture of horse, that's an image. And write a song about her, that's an audio. So all these things, on this side of it, where there is a generative AI multimodal and uh, prompt instructions coming in, and when the prompt is retrained and fine-tuned, it's giving us these results. And this, is, the text is text, the image is image, and this is this. Whereas on the upper approach, when we are already using the unimodal approach for generative AI, we were stuck to get the one result. So telecom doesn't have time to just keep on thinking and designing all these things. So we need to, instead of having single modular approach for one use case at a time, we can have multimodality, which is a very much existing function in generative AI, and then we can adopt to that. Uh, similarly, then I try to just uh, add this, the whole, the previous slide to the telecom use case. That's about the radio signal and image and sound. When we see on the telecom site, these are the, the general existing situation that we have radio signal, we have an image of what is the surrounding going on on that telecom site and the sound. And then cross multimodality uh, uh, can exist on that. We can just uh, mix those signals together and then we can just uh, take out the feature extraction or the results in a manner that it is just showing us in two different areas. So this, these things are, we are evolving for network planning and network design part, and also we can do the same thing for network optimization part in uh, 5G networks, which may require uh, beam forming or power uh, variation, signal strength variations, and all these, and having all these features in a multi-modality mode in, for generative AI, and produce a prompt and output that can give us the uh, attention to the power that we are going to adopt. So the, this require fine tuning and parameter tuning, so because there are so many parameters doing, going on in uh, uh, telecom setup, so that we need to just think and consolidate together and get the final result for us. 
So what we call this whole architecture and design part, the operating model, that is AGI, which stands for uh, Artificial General Intelligence. On top of it, there is a wireless data, which is mentioned over there. Uh, there are different areas in the wireless data part. On, uh, after, uh, that gives output to the textual-based data, which we usually have CDR records, we have CSV files, we have different things in the textual format from the sites, from RF signals and all these things. That goes through the LLM training model. When we call multimodality, we can say LMM and rather than LLM, that's a large language model. Then we have uh, these features that is a network proto protocol, codes, motion control query, and you can see in the end, there is a network design part and there is a network operation part. There are two different use cases working through the multimodality approach and uh, just giving us the, on top of it, if you can see those features, localization, channel estimation, these are the outputs that we may fine tune and produce after doing this. So if we are just talking about one use case of beam forming or wavelet length design, this can go through all these features and then give you the final result in those forms. Here we have this edge network, then task agnostic mode that we need to just retune and redefine those tasks according to that. Uh, confuse if you are, we need to just go back to the paper that I refer, so we can just, you can just find out what is the next big revolution coming in in telecom LLMs. Uh, when I, now I switch from the technical stuff towards uh, the more on a customer stuff. If a customer has this face, what will you believe? He's hap she is happy or she is sad? What do you think? She is happy. You think she is happy, actually? So this is the same situation. We are confused about customer being happy or being sad. When we do those sentiment analysis all those times, we do those surveys based on this. We randomize the data. We pick up the random segments and do the, the not multimodality, do those generative AI or AI, traditional AI stuff, apply a machine learning algorithm and just go through it. So this is the side, the same thing that we have been focusing since morning that network centric approach need to be changed. Before that, that was a more of a network monitoring, how, how this will work in the overall system, what would the leveraging, how telecom can do with the telecom LLMs. Now we need to move from Network-centric approach towards customer-centric approach because eventually we are there to serve the customer, not to the network itself. Network optimization is serving the customer. Network capabilities are serving, network LLMs are serving the customer, but need to be just more focused on customer than coming back to the network and all these uh, AI abilities to be implemented in the telcos. Uh, how this enablement will work, we have uh, this uh, chart in on which there is a fastest, uh, we, we have uh, calculated TCO and TTM based on that. Uh, when we have generative AI models that are already available in the market, we try to just uh, apply on our systems. We need uh, less difficulty in managing those and uh, rather than developing. And if you can see in the last point of this, this, this will require this part will require $1, then it will be $1 million, and then it will be $10 million, and the time will also keep on increasing. So it's very important that we can pick up, pick and choose for, for enablement, those generative AI models that are already existing, try to just adapt to them according to our own features, uh, fine tune them, enable them, and make them happen in the reality, real space. Otherwise, AI will remain a buzzword forever because we will not invest this much $10 million for one model to be fine-tuned and working. We will not. So it will be very challenging for, customer, for network operators or MNOs to work on, uh, to spend more cost for generative AI or AI or anything without understanding the real value and benefit for all these things. Uh, the previous use case that I mentioned, how we just did that, uh, these, this is the complete architecture. We, there were data sources coming over there. We have customer data platform, multi-channel data, automation exists, 
this cloud layer underneath, and then these are the different machine learning outcome that we are. So this is a pl platform-wise approach. You can see these are the platforms that are working, but this is the readily and easy arrangement for us at that time, rather than just uh, hiring a team of data scientists, making them work in the production environment, just doing all these uh, uh, hyperparameter tuning and all these things, uh, applying the algorithm, testing those algorithm, one random forest or XGBoost or anywhere, several different, and then pick up one of theirs, calculate the accuracy on that, and then coming back to that particular thing. So evolution, we had labeled data sets on which we have model like ResNet. It was not very far off. It is just two, three years ago. We were just working, I think, in 2020. And then unlabeled data sets, clustering come in, and uh, the large language model that Google has introduced uh, were BERT, transformer models, and different uh, Google, Meta, and all these have different models which were available for auto ML or auto functions to be there. <laughs> for generative AI, Google has particularly Gemini, and this is their product, and this is coming in the multi-model generative AI approach, so which is coming in the end. So from label data sets to all label and then generative AI come in where there were open AI, which were open source, it's so-called open source, but these foundation model and prompts and all these things require hell of a money and the, uh, how to calcula calculate those tokens, it was very, very challenging task for us at the same time. Any thoughts on so far what we have? Yeah, you were. Um, if, I, if I understood right, so you're creating these multimodal models to, um, to even uh, develop new algorithms for beam forming and channel estimation, et cetera. So mm -hmm. brilliant. But how would it practically be used? So, for example, if it, the, the, to use those effectively, you need radio access networks to be broken apart and fully open, which is not there yet by many vendors. So. How, how do you see that being deployed in your network? So would you have to work with your RAN vendor to integrate those models into their mm. into their channel estimation, which is which is more like a close close model, right? We now? did a test for one of the site on which we did these fine tuning of LLMs on that, and on which we tried to do uh, the one goal was to just have the antenna elevation to the level that it can just have those alpha and p naught parameters that were there. And we usually have uh, engineers going on sites, doing all these things. So we have automated that function internally. And with this, uh, because multimodality at that time were not coming. So on that use case particularly, we are applying this multimodality and this is the output we are trying to achieve on that. Uh, practically, uh, we are just, uh, middle way on that, but again, these models are very much applicable. The first site results are giving a very good result so far. Yeah. So uh, now coming back to the KPI approach that need to be changed, uh, because we were using the uh, use case approach. So what telecom had been conventionally using the KPI approach. So this is very important that within one KPI, there were several different use cases. So if we are spending so much time and money and all these things on uh, KPIs, uh, on a, a single use case that is coming under a KPI, the achieving a KPI will again require kind of a multimodality. So we need to just simplify the stuff, make it a multimodal approach, bring all these use cases together, do uh, either generative AI or simple AI on that, and then we can, so this is the result of the customer use case that we, I have uh, mentioned about in which we have architecture available. And we were able to just have a reduction in recall score to 98.5% uh, FTR. That is, when every customer, when keep on calling to them, that was about 99%. And the first one was uh, personalized content. That is a very, very useful feature of generative AI that was generative, generated, and uh, this was, we were able to. So this is a very, very practical use case that we have recently implemented. Thank you.